Greetings, unsettled souls. Well, everything is quite unsettled today, to uh, put it mildly. This is the Delta Cap of the Month Award Show. I am your host of the Correct Views. And uh, friends, normally, as you know, the Delta Cap of the Month Award tends to be a bit more jovial and silly. But unfortunately today, the level of dumpstum that we are seeing in our country, and I don't know if it's a word, but I've made it up. The level of dumpstum that we are seeing, dumpstum is just dumb. There you go. And before I get into this, I want to say a couple of things. First of all, I am happy that the officer who killed Mr. Floyd is going to be facing charges and likely going to prison for killing a man by slow torture for seven to ten minutes in the middle of a Minneapolis street. I want to make that be clear here. I am happy that he's going to face face charges for what he did. It wasn't something minor by any stretch of the imagination. And I'm happy that he's going to be in front of a judge. He's on suicide watch tonight, and his wife is divorcing him over uh, his actions. I also want to mention that uh, Stoll, S-T-U-L-L, -L, I suggest you look him up online, not just for political uh, action, but also for uh, a number of other things. He's an entertainer. He's knee-deep in video games, uh, technologies, and streaming. He's got a number of things going on. Shout out to Ryan Stoll. Him and I, we do not always agree fully. But on the essential, we agree. And when he went, uh, he started the, uh, he hosted the protests in Akron, Ohio. Now, I was at the Canton, Ohio protest. There's video on my Facebook page, a flashbang right off beside me. Um, I don't think that that was needed because in downtown where I was, there was yelling and protesting, uh, but there wasn't anybody actually doing anything. Although I did hear that it benched the city and um, it needed to be shut down. I, I understand. However, I don't know that the, uh, what, what was done in downtown Canton was necessary. However, there are a couple things that people are not understanding here. And I'm going to talk about both sides because I'm nothing if not fair. And I think that's one of the reasons why Ryan uh, gave me the honor of going with him. Because he knew that I'm fair. He knows that I'm honest. And he knew that I was certainly going to film everything he did, which I did. I didn't let anybody talk to him or get near him without him being on camera so that nobody could say that he said or did something that he did not say or do. Because like myself, he is a man of peace. And I, I'm saying this because this is the Dunk Cap of the Month award show. And at both protests, I have to say two things. I heard either some of the most intelligent, well-spoken individuals that anybody, and I heard some of the most asinine, stupid things I've ever heard in my whole life. Um, the intelligent things, particularly, again, came from Ryan, that's why he posted this, saying that we don't know, and he, he, he's, he's, a, he's a black man, we don't know if what the officer did was based on race. Let me say that again for those of you that might have missed it. We do not know that what the officer did was based on race. Was it excessive? Was it police brutality? Was it murder? Yes, it certainly seems to be, without a doubt. Certainly seems to be. But that's different from claiming that it's racist. This inherent racism that people like to talk about. I'm sorry for the vast majority of white people. There is no white privilege and there is no vast dislike of black people. That is a myth. What we do have is a history 
of police abusing power to all people. And that is exactly why the system, people like George Soros, want to divide us based on our color. Because if we realize that we are all being hosed equally, I'm going to say it again, being hosed equally, regardless of skin tone, then we could actually band together and stop some of this. And I'm going to get to it at the end of my intro here, so don't zone out. I have a remarkable idea that could change a lot of things if people would unify. It's not that hard either. But we know that he was abusing his power, but we don't know that it was based on race. This is an assumption, and we all know that we never assume because you make an ass out of you and me. We do know that it is being sold as a race issue. And we're going to address how we can prove that we're all being hosed here. There were 40 people, I think this was on stats.com. There were, let me see, make sure I'm reading this one. Yes. There were 40 people who were murdered in 2019 by the police officers, police officers, law enforcement who was not armed. They were not armed, I should say. You want to know what the breakdown of the numbers were? The breakdown of the numbers were 19 of them were white, 9 of them were black, 9 of them were Latino, and the remaining two were other. That means that contrary to the popular narrative, an unarmed white man is still more likely to be killed by the police than an unarmed black man. Do you want another stat from stats.com? Because I've got a number of them here. An unarmed black man or a black criminal in general is more likely to be killed by a fellow black officer than a white officer. Now, I know a lot of people don't want to hear this, but it's very easy to look up what I'm telling you. It's, it's not very difficult. I didn't suddenly go to rocket science school and learn how to do all of this. You can look up what I'm saying. These are all true. These are all facts. It is also a fact that a vast majority, I heard somebody at the protest say two things that really frustrated me. Besides people calling for looting, which I heard in Canton, you can hear it on the video that I shot of the protest. It's on my Facebook page. Correct me. Um, one of the things that they said was that black people make up 10 to 13 percent of the population, but they make up upwards to what 50 percent of those incarcerated. So I decided to do some research, and you know what I found? I'll tell you. I found that the vast majority of black people who are in jail or prison are incarcerated due to crimes which they committed against other black people. Why is this never talked about? You always hear how many African Americans are incarcerated, but you don't often hear why. Well, the why is because they were committing crimes against other black people. Something else a lady said. She said that her son was the honor roll student and that he had perfect attendance, but that the only thing white America would see when they look at him is a young black man. That's not true. That simply is not true. And before all the white people out there start going, yeah, let me, let me point out a few things that go the other way. Since, again, I say this all the time, my dad was Mexican, Italian, and Sicilian. That is not white. My mom was everything white. English, Irish, English, I English, Irish, English, Irish, French, Welsh, and German. In other words, she had to wear sunscreen at the office Christmas party in Alaska. So I, I can see things from both sides. I've had people in my life not like me be, make, make jokes, comments because I've got Mexican in me. 
I've had people call me Cochise because I look like I may have Indian features. I've never been tested South American Indian since most Mexicans are. And I've had people, both Irish, white, and Italian, sort of tell me that I'm not really Irish or I'm not really Italian because I'm not Catholic. I'm Christian, but I'm not Catholic. So I get it. I've experienced some of this. But let me point something out here real quick. White people, in many instances, say, oh, well, black people hate white people too. You hear it all the time. That is also BS. Yes, I have been jumped by black people before a couple of times, specifically because they thought I was white which I guess for all intents and purposes, I am white because I'm not as dark complected as my father was. Fair enough. And I don't care if you call me white, I don't care if you call me Mexican. I don't, I don't play that game. Call me whatever you want. Cuss at me if you want. It's called the First Amendment. Enjoy. Call me racist. He's racist. Call me whatever you want. It's the First Amendment. Enjoy. What it's there for. But white people who go that route are also wrong. Most black people are not racist against whites. Some of them are. The vast majority of white people are not in any way racist against white people. There is no inherent racism here. You don't see ads that say white people, hiring white people. You don't see ads that say opening white person, $15 an hour, black people, $10 an hour. Do you want to know why that's not in the paper? Because that's not what we are. In many ways, we do live in a post-racial society. And the number of racists that we do have, regardless of who it is that they are hating, we will always have. They will never be eliminated because some people choose to hate. But that is not the vast majority of people. But I will say this. We are not honoring anybody who's died by burning down anything. And I've heard people say, you don't understand, break the system, break the system. You're not breaking the system. Let me tell you what you're breaking. You're breaking the bank account of people who work, for instance, at Target, which they burnt down. You want to know who works at Target? White people, black people, all people, also known as Americans. Americans who very likely were quarantined for the last six weeks and are delighted to even have a job. They were probably delighted to return to work at that Target store or any of the other countless stores, the Wendy's that was burnt down. They were probably delighted to return to work or that they even had a job either during the outbreak or after it. And now, do you know what? They don't have a job. And do you want to know why that is? Because a lot of idiots burn it down for the supposed good of Mr. Floyd. In other words, they used his blood as an excuse to burn things down. They used his blood as an excuse to go get a new TV. People broke into the, uh, uh, the CVS. What do you think they stole? Beer. Beer. That's how you get justice for somebody that was killed in the street by a scumbag cop. And that's what he was. That's, that's how you get justice? By stealing beer. That is why I'm mentioning this on the Delft Cap of the Month Award show. And that's why this show isn't as jovial as some of the other ones have been, although I do get ex I'm going to be talking about escape dopes later, so don't tune out. It does get funny. But listen to me, people. This is ridiculous. One more thing before I get to my solution to prove how ridiculous this really is. People are like, we can't let the police get away with this. Get away with it. The culprit, who, let's face it, everyone's innocent until proven guilty, but probably guilty. The culprit here, the scumbag cop, is in jail. 
facing third degree murder charges, manslaughter. The officers that were with him are likely going to soon be arrested as the investigation on. Well, yeah, but it teaches us to rebel against Donald Trump because orange man bad. Orange man bad. Orange man is the reason that the investigation was fast tracked to put the scumbag cop in jail. Is this understood here? Because I'm not entirely sure. I got a very important message. Give me two seconds. It is very obvious here that the president expedited, sped up the process. I'm pretty sure those are fired. We'll see. Sped up the process. I'm in Canton, Ohio, so it's a great place to die. When this show's over, I'm probably going to go film some other lunacy I heard going on. So who knows? But if I die, it's fine. Nobody cares. The issue here is Orange Man Bad is the reason that we sped up the process of investigation into the scumbag cop. Now, what are you saying about looting? I have no problem with that. I'm sorry. I don't necessarily like that he did it by quoting something to which I don't think he knew the history of it. That wasn't exactly extremely responsible. Uh, but there's idiots on my Facebook feed saying property is not worth a human life. No, I let me tell you something. I was a DJ at one club on residency there for roughly 14 and a half years, and I was as close to full-time as you can get since Obamacare ruined the 40-hour uh, work week. I was full-time for almost all of that, except for the year and a half to which I was working with Argus Media, and then sometimes I was only working one day a week, and I did take some time off. But for the most part, about 13 to 14 and a half years, depending on how you want to define it. I lost that job due to COVID-19 and other factors. But I just got a job driving Grubbo. I do still do freelance journalism. I do still do real estate photography. That's also, excuse me, that's also driving. My car, the car I'm using because mine blew up, that's another story. My car is my business. It is what pays my rent. It is what pays for life. It is, it is what I have. So the idea that someone is going to approach my car, they might find out what kind of gun I like. They might find out whether or not I'm a good shot. And how many of you have seen the meme with The Rock, and then you turn around, and uh, The Rock is um, looking at the girl in the back seat, and he says... It's a meme, you know, you know what memes are. It says um, that if you shoot someone over your property, it proves that your property meant more than their life. And the reply was, if someone is trying to steal my property, then they are proving that my property means more than their life did. If you approach my car to loot it, to steal it, to damage it, or to hurt me, don't be surprised if you hear a boom like that. I'm sorry. Just don't be surprised. Okay, so I needed to get into that. And now I want to say quickly what my solution is. 